you have not wasted your votes. We heard your cries and we are here to champion your interest without failure. We vow to you that we shall never cease to ensure that Parliament remains a house with teeth that bite, particularly at incompetent, mediocre and corrupt fat cats who are permanently sleeping on duty and only wake up on payday or on the day of stealing. We expected, as expected, we are of course starting today to hold the executive accountable. We have been convened here for the whole week to debate what was supposed to be the State of the Nation address by the a man who held the ambition to be president for almost three decades. Indeed, this is our duty, Ex except in this case we really have no sona to debate. What we have is a misguided, incoherent, contradictory and proven to be futile ideas mixed in a bag of fantasies. For a man to be hyped up by the entire local and international media only to pitch up extremely low is tragic. We were abused here during the election campaign that saw people like Oprah Winfrey rented and sneaked into the country in the name of the Global Citizen Festival to come and tell us how Madiba wanted you, Mr. President, to be president. After your speech, we now ask ourselves as to what did Madiba see in you which we can't see. Your speech didn't inspire confidence and hope amongst the poor, young and old people of South Africa. Your own benches here were not moved at all, hence they couldn't even sing a song in salutation of your tired speech like they normally do when they feel revived. They didn't hear Mkombandlela. They didn't know and they still don't know what is expected of them from your speech. They didn't recover, you didn't recover any of the lost votes. If anything, those who voted for you are now regretting because they wasted their votes on a president without a plan. You have no new ideas on how to break the country out of a colonial and apartheid legacy of underdevelopment, poverty, landlessness, and unemployment. You don't know how to collapse. You don't know how the collapsed public health system, which led to dysfunctional hospitals, are going to be fixed. The schools have become war zones with teachers and learners living in permanent fear because they were failed by their own government. And as far as it's not uh, buying study material, paying rent and fees for the students, yet the fed salaries of senior managers is paid monthly without fail, and no one knows as to how this problem is going to be resolved. Mr. President, you couldn't provide us with a solid vision with regard to the continent. You couldn't speak to the African continent despite the ongoing massacre in Sudan, instability in Libya, the economic crisis in Zimbabwe, which led to huge unemployment and currency crisis, right-wing terrorism in Kenya, and the ongoing occupation of Western Sahara by Morocco. You couldn't render a message of solidarity and hope to the Palestinian people who live under apartheid Israel, and the people of Venezuela who are fighting against imperialism. You fail to tell us what is it that you will do differently from how the ANC has handled the economy over the past 25 years. The central tenets of your message remained trapped in the neoliberal conception of development that has failed to work in South Africa and the whole continent. You are not even brave enough to repeat the manifesto promises that you made across the country during the campaign for elections. Among this is an urgent question of land expropriation without compensation. Somehow, your speech was limited to four points. Fighting corruption, fighting crime, and asking black people to pay electricity, and getting 10-year-olds to read to understand. Beyond this, it was a confusion about jobs to be created. This is Fred from Africa. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe.
comment and share for many more African stories, culture, slavery, food, lifestyle and many more. And thank you for stopping by to learn more about Africa, our motherland and the mother of the world. At one point it was 155,000 jobs in the next five years, then it was 2 million jobs in 10 years. Yet the National Development Plan speaks of a different target, 10 million jobs by 2030. In addition, your own job summit facilitated agreements with private business to hold back on retrenchment and help create over 200 jobs. Capital is not only create, is not creating any jobs, they are doing the opposite, retrenching workers, demonstrating that you are not this captain of industry you are portrayed to be. Your influence and command on private capital is over-exaggerated. This entire confusion explains why the president resorts to fantasizing. So after being stuck for four hours in a train in Soshanguwe, the billionaire president was so traumatized that he now fantasized about a bullet train from Messina to Cape Town. Before the much complicated bullet train, Mr. President, you need to get the Soshanguwe train to work and take people to work on time. Comrade <laughs> President, when you got struck in, in a train, all of us were excited that now the president knows the realities that our people are subjected to. You come here and say nothing about that experience. You come here and not tell us that since you have seen with your own naked eye, this is the plan on how you are going to fix that problem of trains in South Africa. You said nothing about transport to a point where your Minister of Transport became so frustrated and he had to quote you on your dream of a bullet train because he couldn't find anything relating to transport in your speech. <laughs> but most tragic is the ignorance and disrespect shown to the conference resolutions of your own organization simply because you personally do not agree with them. Mr. President, we urge you to recall that conference resolutions are binding. Even Nelson Mandela with famous and well-celebrated stature, he still recognized them as a mandate from the membership which must be implemented. So let us remind you that on page 31, resolution 15 under the economic transformation section, the resolution reads, expropriation of land without compensation should be amongst the key mechanisms available to government to give effect to land reform and redistribution. On page 32 of your own resolution, resolution 29 of the economic transformation section reads, it is however a historical anomaly that there are private shareholders of the Reserve Bank. Conference resolves that the Reserve Bank should be 100% owned by the state. This is the same document which include the election outcome of the leadership, including your own election as a president, which shows that the election of leaders is as important as resolutions on policy. We were taught as young leaders in the Youth League by Khalima Motlante that you must respect your own decisions or risk rendering the collective structure that took them irrelevant. He also taught us of the necessity you have to translate your conference resolution into a program of action. But the document in your own organization called the Eye of the Needle, a document about the caliber of leaders that must lead your movement, we are told once a decision has been taken on the basis of the majority views, it binds everyone, including those who held a contrary view. You will therefore recall that because of this principle, although Chris Arne was very angry at the decision to suspend the armed struggle, once a resolution was affirmed by the higher structure, 
it was binding. He had to go around the country and explain it to others as if it was his own view. <laughs> Mr. President, in 2018, Sona, you came here and said, guided by the resolution of the 54th National Conference of the Governing Party, the approach to the land reform will include expropriation of land without compensation. In January this year, you repeated and said, we will support the work of the Constitutional Review Committee tasked with the review of Section 25 of the Constitution to set a provision of expropriation of land without compensation. Now that you have been elected, you turn your back on the promises you made to the electorate because you undermine our people like that. Last week, you have completely retreated on expropriation of land without compensation and nationalization of the Reserve Bank. But let us warn you, if you do not respect the resolution of your own conference, imagine what message you are sending to those who did not want you to be the president. You are saying to them that the decision or the outcome of you being elected as a president is not binding since all other decisions taken in the same conference are not binding. What is the state of our country today, President, is unemployment which has reached a new high level of 27.6%, meaning over 9.9 .9 million young people are unemployed in South Africa. We must create jobs because when you say you are going to create 2 million jobs in 10 years, you are simply saying to almost more than 7 million young people that you are not going to get jobs for the next 10 years. That's why you are saying 2 million. An honest president would have said, even if you elected me, the 7 million of all of you will not get jobs because I've got no plan to create jobs. Comrade President, it must be made clear that the crisis in higher education will not be resolved, particularly under the new leadership of the Department of Higher Education. It has got no capacity. It has demonstrated before that it doesn't have the interest of black child at heart. Let us warn you that this free education you have promised our people is not being delivered. There are no proper libraries. Our children are not receiving the learning material because NSFAS doesn't have capacity to give those children learning material. No access to food, no accommodation, and that is what constitutes the life of our children today. So, Comrade President, we don't need an ample free education. We need a real free education where there will not be registration fee, where all children who qualify to get a seat at tertiary level will only be required to produce their metric result and that will end them a seat at that level. We must make it very clear, Mr. President, that it is not going to happen in South Africa, the issue of resolving inequality, if we do not resolve the land question. We must therefore warn you that if you do not expropriate land without compensation and return it to its rightful owners, the democratic projects remains in a permanent threat. Our people are going to engage in an unled revolution because they will be fighting for what rightfully belongs to them. We said here in warning the ANC that we cannot use the land question to encourage people to vote for us. It is an emotive issue and when we speak about it, we must be meaning it, not what you did uh, to the electorate. We will never resolve the social ills in our society if we do not resolve the land question. If we do not change 
the patterns of property ownership in South Africa, white people will continue to think that they are superior because they own the means of production. We make no apology. Neither are we ashamed to repeat the call that the land must be expropriated for equal uh, redistribution. The first and the most practical step towards creating quality life for our people is by giving them the land. We must not retreat, retreat in our endeavor to amend the constitution to allow the expropriation without compensation. Mr. President, we will not win a fight against corruption if the president is involved in allegation of money laundering. We want the president to come clear that to explain and take the country into confidence as to who are the people who donated money in the CR17 campaign and what do they stand to benefit. I'm not even sure if your party policy allow that you must set up a fund to finance a campaign if you want to become this or that in your own party. We need the names, not leaked documents, Mr. President. You ought to call all these trustees and say to them, they must give you a report of who donated money and what are the expectations of those people. We don't have an intention, none whatsoever, to remove you as a president because your people have elected you democratically. But if you are going to come across as being a constitutional delinquent, we'll be left with no option but to engage in an impeachment process against you. This is Fred from Africa. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe, comment, and share for many more African stories, culture, slavery, food, lifestyle, and many more. And thank you for stopping by to learn more about Africa, our motherland, and the mother of the world. We want you, President, where a mistake was committed, to take full responsibility and announce which practical steps you are going to take in correcting um, those mistakes. We don't see anyone in your party, if we were to be removed tomorrow, who can replace you. Otherwise, we'll all be in a disaster. So, we are in a disaster now. We don't want to be in a worse disaster. Please help South Africa by taking it into your confidence. Make sure that you lead by example. You are a human being, you will commit mistake. Where you have committed a mistake, you must come out and confess and say, South Africans will decide my fate. Don't be the most dishonest person beyond the one who came before you. We thought we were in a worse situation. We don't want to be in a more worse situation than we were before. We want a president that is ethical, a president that is honest, a president that opens up and say, how do we fix this mistake which was committed in my name? Yes. President, we must tell you that people are poverty stricken now. People are unemployed now. People are landless now. People are being raped now. Crime is too high now. They are not dreaming about it. That is the reality of their life. Stop dreaming. Implement programs that are going to change their lives. How can an ordinary man walk into a shop holding 100 rand in his pocket with the power to buy a cold drink, arrive at the shelf and say to a shopkeeper, I dream of buying a cold drink when you've got the power to buy a cold drink. You've got no luxury to dream. You are a president. 
You are an implementer. You've got the power to make things happen. You want a bullet train. Stop dreaming. Announce how you are going to do a bullet train. If you don't know, ask Paul Mashatili. He spoke about moral, monorail at some point in Gauteng and demonstrated how it can be done from Johannesburg to Soweto. We were, we were still traumatized by how train. We said we don't want monorail. You, you come here worse than Paul Mashatili. You just say bullet train from here to there. You don't tell us how it's going to be done. You want to create a city. Stop dreaming. Tell us of the land where you want to create a city. How long will it take you? How much you need to create the city? You've got the power to do so. You've got, you've got the power to fight corruption. Don't be scared of corrupt individuals. They will not remove you. You are a president now. Don't worry whether you'll come back or not. Take a decision now. You've got the power to take the decision. Stop dreaming about taking decisions when you've got the power to take a decision. When you appointed Honorable Praveen against Public Protector's report, you took your powers away because you said his review suspend the remedial action. You can't even remove a deputy minister from now onwards. If a public protector says, these are the remedial action against the deputy minister, that deputy minister will lodge an, a, a review of that remedial action. You'll be stuck with a corrupt deputy minister because yes. Pravin made it difficult for you to be a president. Stop dreaming, take a decision, wake up. Oh, on a point of order, Chair. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching our videos and of course we are very much grateful to always have you on board, always have you as our supporters, who always there for us. Anytime we drop a video, you always there to watch our videos, we always you always there to support us and we are always very much grateful for that. So guys, we want to leave this video for you to comment, give us your opinion. What do you think about the speech that Mr. Julius Lomalema has just delivered on behalf of the people of EFF? They, we, today we don't want to impose our own opinions and that's why we are leaving this platform for you guys to also contribute also comment to this powerful speech of mr julius Selo malema what do you think about this speech do you think mr julius Selo malema has over narrated or missed the points in his speech do you think mr julius Selo malema is always on point anytime he delivers his speech about something so guys let's see what you think about this video in the comment section thank you so much guys watching us from south africa guys watching us from kenya guys watching us from uganda guys watching us from united states of america guys watching us from ghana from cameroon from congo from burkina faso from ghana from mali from uh, canada from all parts of the world china we have fans from china too thank you so much for always that support us we highly appreciate your support we highly appreciate your 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 time that you always uh, dedicate to watch our videos see you again in our next video